Hey everyone, welcome to Big Fork Chapel Online. So glad that you've joined us today. It is going to be a wonderful day. I'm glad that you're here. And would you do me a favor? Would you let us know that you're here? We would love to connect with you. And we've been talking about this for the past couple of weeks. And last week specifically, we talked about connecting and, and being intentional. And so I invite you again. Why don't you let us know that you're watching today, where you're watching from, who's watching with you. It was really neat to see some of the feedback from last week. In fact, we even had uh, somebody check in from Japan last Sunday. That is so cool. Um, so I want to encourage you again, make sure you say hi. We want to say hi to you, connect with you today. And so if you'd make sure to do that, that'd be great. Today we are kicking off November. I don't know about you, but I am ready for this year to be done. But until that happens right now, God is wanting to do something in our lives. We believe that. I believe that for you. And we've been in this series called Engage. We've been talking about how do we engage our lives with God's plans and purposes. And over the past couple of weeks, I've used the illustration about like a motorcycle or, or any vehicle. You've got fuel and you've get, got the engine and everything is working properly. But until the gears are engaged, the vehicle doesn't move and the purpose isn't fulfilled. And that's what we've been talking about. That's what we're talking about in this series is how do we engage our lives with God's plans and purposes? What are those plans and purposes? Well, today I want to talk to you about engaging in something uh, that is challenging. It's, it's, these last couple of weeks have been challenging as well, but today is going to be especially challenging. How many of you remember working out? Do you, you remember that when you'd go to the gym and, or maybe you were in a, on a sports team or something like that? And I remember as a young man in the gym, you know, lifting weights and, and exercising and, and all this sort of stuff. And, and I remember uh, lifting weights and then the next day paying for it. You remember that feeling, the feeling of sore muscles, muscles that had been stretched beyond what they normally were. In other words, taken from, from what is, is default into something new. And that's that's what working out is all about. That's the whole intention of working out is to grow our muscles, to stretch them beyond what is normal or or just average, to stretch them so that they can gain capacity or add capacity, lifting more than what they've been able to do before. It's growing. And as we grow, as, as people, as humans, um, not only are we supposed to grow physically, but we're also supposed to grow spiritually, emotionally, mentally. And, and each of these things, in each of these areas of our lives, God wants to stretch us from our default, stretching us to expand our capacity. In other words, helping us to grow so that we can have a greater capacity for what God has for us. Too many times I've seen people just get through life, just, just couch potato their way through life and miss out on so many great things. And the same thing can be said about our spiritual lives. Too many times we have couch potato Christians, people who just show up on Sundays or once a month on Sundays or, or just, you know, every once in a while they'll claim to be a Christian, but they're not being stretched. They're not growing beyond what their default is. And I want to challenge you today to grow in your relationship with God. That is what we were designed for. In fact, uh, in our verses today, the first verse we're looking at is Colossians chapter 2, verse 7. It says this, let your roots grow down into him, speaking of Jesus, and let your lives be built on him, Jesus. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught, and you will overflow with thankfulness. If we let our roots grow down, we need to grow in our relationship with Jesus Christ. The whole point of growing like into Jesus Christ is so that we can become like Jesus Christ. That's what a Christian is, is Christ-like. And then look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 24. Put on your new nature, being a Christian, being in Christ, put on your new, creature, new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Truly created for holiness and righteousness. You were created to be like God. Now, who are we talking about here? We're talking about Jesus Christ again. Remember, he was fully God. And he is the example of who we are supposed to be like, who we are supposed to grow into. And if we are going to grow, we have to stretch beyond our default and, and grow in our capacity, be stretched so that we can increase our capacity. God has great plans and purposes for your life. 
and he wants you to grow. Before we dive even in any deeper today, why don't you grab your coffee, grab your Bible, let's take some time to worship through music. Father, we thank you for your presence here with us, and we just ask that you would move in power, that you would have your way, Lord, uh, that you would just inhabit the praises of your people as we lift up these songs to you. Be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're saved. Open up the heavens. Open up the floodgates of heaven. Pour down on us. Lord, we praise you. We glorify your name. You alone are worthy, God. the heavens we want to see you open up the flood 
gates mighty river flowing from your heart filling every part of our Lord, fill our praises. We love you, Lord God. We love you, Lord. Amen. So today we're talking about growing in our relationship with God. In other words, engaging growth into our lives so we can expand our capacity or increase our capacity. What God has for us, he wants to give us more of. And God has more life more uh, blessings that he wants to bring into our lives. He wants to stretch us and help us to become who he's designed us to be. Now, this growing is something that goes all the way back into the Old Testament. And in fact, this was something that was encouraged from the very beginning, from, from the beginning of God's relationship with man. And in fact, Moses helps lay it out for the Israelites, but he also um, echoes it to us today on about how can we grow. And Moses gave some very clear instructions in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 1. This is what it says. And Moses summoned all of Israel and said to them, Hear, O Israel, the statutes and the rules that I speak to you in your hearing today, and you shall learn them to be careful to do them. Three things that Moses points out here, three important instructions that he gives Israel and us today on how we can grow in our relationship with God. The very first one is this. He says, hear. In other words, listen. In, in different translations, it's, it's listen. Listen to God's word. Listen to these instructions that I have for you, that God has for you. Now, where do we hear God's instructions? God's been instructing us for thousands of years. And the way that he does this is he speaks very clearly and he has done it. He has given his word, his instructions to us, and it all comes from the Bible. That is his instruction for us. That is what we are supposed to be listening to, his voice. In fact, in John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, uh, the word was God, and it was through the word that all things were created, and the word came to live with us. And the word was Jesus Christ. From the very beginning, Jesus was involved in giving us instruction on how to live, and we are to listen. We are to hear God's word. You see, he has revealed his character, he has revealed his purposes, he's revealed his instructions, he's, in, he's revealed all of that already. Sometimes people wonder, uh, God, what am I supposed to do now? What do you want me to do next? What is your will for my life? God has already laid all of it out in the Bible. He's laid it all out for us, for you, for me, what his will for our lives are. One of them is that we would grow, and we have to listen to his instructions, uh, his, his uh, principles, his character, so that we can learn how to grow. It is his will. In Proverbs 1.23, um, the writer says this, says, come and listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you and make you wise. This is powerful here. He says, listen to my counsel. Why? Because I will share my heart and I'll make you wise. If we listen to the voice of God, if we listen to his instructions, not only are we going to receive instruction, but we're going to hear his heart. We're going to hear what he's passionate about, what he wants to, us to know about him, but also he's going to help us become wise. How do we do that? Well, the second thing that Moses says is that we need to learn. He says, hear, O Israel, the instructions, and he says, learn them, learn them. We need to understand what God means when, he is, uh, when he's speaking to us. What is it that he is trying to imply about our lives, about his character, about his interaction with us? What is God trying to tell us? We need to learn what it is that he's saying. Um, in Proverbs chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, it says this, My children, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to my wisdom and concentrate on understanding. Cry out for insight and for understanding. See, 
the writer says here two times, he talks about understanding. If we are to listen or hear God, then the next thing we need to do is we need to understand what it is that he's trying to teach us. What is he telling us about our lives, about our interaction with each other, about how we should respond to those that are frustrating us, about how we should handle money, how we should handle our children, how we should handle our marriages. God gives us all of these instructions, but it's up to us to learn, to understand what it is that he's instructing us in. You see, learning isn't just hearing but it's seeing, it's, it's understanding the application of what we are hearing. So we are hearing God's instructions. That's the first thing. So first of all, we need to pay attention to what God says, right? And then the second thing is we need to learn or understand how this applies to my life, how this applies to my relationships, how this applies to my, my health as a Christian, as, as a man, as a husband, as a dad. All of these things we have to now apply to our lives and and see how it applies and start incorporating it into our lives. That's what understanding does. So when when we hear or we listen to God's instructions, and then we learn or understand and apply, figure out what he is wanting us to apply to our lives, then the third thing that Moses says is that we are to do. We are supposed to do exactly what God has told us to do. We are supposed to simply obey. This is where it, it gets confusing sometimes when people come to me and they're like, uh, Chad, I don't, I don't know what God wants me to do. I'm like, well, what did God tell you to do? Well, I don't know. Well, what does the Bible say for you to do in this situation? What does the Bible tell you about how you handle relationships? What does the Bible tell you about being a person above reproach? What does the Bible tell you now you have to decide to do, to obey what God has already instructed you in. Now, I, I don't want to make this too simple or at the same time too complicated, but this is one of the biggest stretching points for many of us is just simply obeying. And this is where we go from our default, where we, we intentionally choose to obey, to do, so that we are being stretched beyond what we've been doing to be able to handle more capacity in our relationship with God. That is part of growth. And James chapter 1 verse 22 through 24 says it this way, but be doers of the word and not just hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, He is like a man who looks intently at the nature of his face in a mirror, for he looks at himself and then he goes away and once um, forgets, at once forgets what he is like. In other words, when you uh, hear God's word, it's like having a mirror in front of you and you see the things that you need to be working on. You're confronted with truth. And if and when we are confronted with truth, we have a choice. Are we going to just hear the truth? and then turn away and do nothing about it? Or are we going to hear the truth and then respond to it? Make a re- Choose to make a response to what we have been confronted with, with love from God. You see, he wants us to understand. He wants us to hear or listen to his words. He wants us to learn, to understand, and what the application is to our lives. And then he wants us to do or implement what he's instructed us in. When we do these three things, then we grow. And like our verse said at the very beginning in Colossians, then our roots will grow down into him, Jesus Christ, who is the author and perfecter. He is the originator of our faith. And when we are connected with Jesus Christ and we begin to grow and we begin to actually learn, hear, listen, or hear, learn, and do, then we will start growing in our relationship with him. When we do those things, when we choose to do those things, then we will get stretched. And like our muscles, which potentially haven't been used or, or have been dormant for a few years or maybe a few months or even uh, over the course of these past few months being in COVID and all of a sudden you start exercising again and all of a sudden you're sore, the same thing happens in our spiritual lives. Maybe you've been sitting on the sidelines for just a little too long and now God is asking you to hear, to learn, and now to do. 
He is going to stretch you. He's going to, to pull on those muscles to increase your capacity. And you will be a little bit sore for a bit, but here's the important thing. Why do we work out? Why do we exercise? So that we can be in better health, so we can do more, so we can have a higher capacity in what we accomplish. And the same thing is true in our spiritual lives. God wants us to grow, but we have to choose to engage that into our lives. When we choose to engage growth, when we choose to listen, when we choose to learn, when we choose to do, we will be stretched and then we will increase our capacity for all that God has for us. God wants to give us more. He wants to place more in our lives. He wants to do more in our lives, but he will only do and only go as far as we are willing to be obedient in. If we are willing to be obedient and to stretch ourselves and grow in our relationship with him and increase our capacity, he's willing to do even more in our lives. You see, it's all about what God's will is for us. He wants us to grow, to become more like Christ. It's not about being a better Chad. It's about becoming more like Christ. It's not about you becoming a better you or a better version of you. It's about you becoming more like Christ. And as we become more like Christ, the better, the greater our capacity grows and our ability in our relationship with God grows and, and our connection with him grows and we become more like Christ and, and our relationships become more blessed and our, our families are blessed and our, our homes are blessed, our workplaces are blessed, our churches are blessed because we are choosing to grow. So how do we do this? How do we grow? We have to be intentional. You have to choose today. Are you going to hear God's word? Are you going to spend time engaged in the word of God? Are you going to take time to not only hear it, but now learn it? In other words, understand how does this apply to my life? And then finally, are you going to do? Are you going to do what God has instructed you to do? Are you going to obey? We must be willing to work out our faith just like we would when we work out our bodies, stretching and pulling and pushing and going further than we have before, because God has more that he wants to accomplish in our lives and in your family and in your work and in your homes and in your church and in Big Fork Chapel. And I believe that. Why don't we take a few moments and let's just ask the Holy Spirit to speak into our lives about what we need to be doing. May we now listen and learn what it is that God is trying to tell us today. Let's take some time to worship through music. You are here 
touching every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, healing every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you.
So friends, today we've been talking about how to engage our lives in God's plans and purposes. Specifically, how do we engage in growth? What do we need to do so that God can help us grow, so that we can become more like Christ? Well, the very first thing we have to do is we have to be willing to have a relationship with Christ. And today, maybe you're listening or you're watching and you don't have a relationship with God. You haven't asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. And as you've listened today, you've realized, or maybe you understand, or you've been, you are now at a point where you say, you know what? I need Jesus in my life. I need to connect with God. There's something more. And I believe that Jesus Christ is it. Friend, I want you to know this. Jesus loves you so much. God loves you so much that he gave his one only son, Jesus Christ, that whoever believes in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. Friends, you see, sin has separated us from God. And sin is, it creates a barrier, a boundary between us and our relationship with Father God. And the only way that we can make it through this barrier, this boundary, is what Jesus Christ already did. When he died on the cross, he paved a way. He broke a way through sin so that we could have a relationship with God again. Not only did he do that on the cross, but then he was buried, placed in a grave, and rose from the grave three days later with power over sin and death. No no longer could sin and death have any hold on our lives if we believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And a scripture tells us that if we believe in our hearts that he is Lord and he has saved us from our sins and we confess with our mouth, we will be saved. And so I want to encourage you, friend, today, is that you? Would you be willing to do just that? Would you admit that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior today, that you've sinned and you need him? Would you believe in your heart that he is God, that he loves you and he is your Lord and Savior? And would you confess it with your mouth? It would sound something like a prayer. And your prayer may sound just a little bit different, but it would go something like this. Dear Jesus, I realize today that sin has separated me from you. I have been disobedient. And I ask you, Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior today. Please forgive me of my sin. I've been wrong. And I ask you to come into my life. Please forgive me. Be my God. Be my Lord. Be my Savior today. And I choose from this moment forward to follow after you, to obey you, to hear, to learn, and to do what you've asked of me. And I want to do that every day, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, it's like a lost thing or a lost friend or a lost son being found. And there's a celebration going on in heaven. And if if you're wondering what I'm talking about, look, look up Luke chapter 15. It talks about this, about lost things being found and how God celebrates, how heaven celebrates when a lost son or daughter comes home. And so I want to encourage you to to read that this week. Now, friends, 
the next challenge I have for you is if you are a Christian, you have been watching today, are you engaging in growth? Are you choosing to grow as a Christian in your relationship with God? Are you choosing to hear God's word? Are you choosing to learn and understand and apply his word to your life? And then are you willing to do it? You see, this is hard sometimes. Sometimes we are doing great and sometimes maybe we're not doing so well. I want to challenge you today. I want to encourage you today. Start. Start right now. If you haven't been, start right now. Allow yourself to be stretched. If you have been reading God's word and applying it to your life, why don't you ask God for something more? What is it that, what more out of his word that, that he has for you? I believe that he is wanting to stretch you as well. Here's the cool thing. If every single one of us were to hear God's word, learn it, and do it more often, increasing our capacity to become more like Christ, the world would be different. Relationships would be different. Communities would be different. Your workplace will be different. I believe this. I believe that God is wanting to not only impact your life, but through you, as you become more like Christ, he's going to affect other people's lives. And that is God's will for our life, that we grow into likeness of him. And so I challenge you today, friends, this week, would you take time to stretch yourself, to engage in God's word, and to engage your life in growth? I'd love to pray with you now before we go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your love toward us, that God, you are wanting us to grow our roots down into our relationship with you, to to find our nourishment, to find... uh, exactly what we need right now in our relationship with you to grow our faith. God, may we hear your words today. May we hear your words this week, not only hearing them and and listening to what it is that you are trying to tell us, but God, would you also help us to see the application, to understand, to learn your words and how they apply to our lives. And then may we finally be obedient and do what you've instructed. God, may we follow through on the instructions you've already given us. God, you are wanting us to grow. You're wanting us to increase our capacity so that we can become more like Christ. And God, I ask that you help us to do that this week. You are the one who gives us strength, who gives us the ability, who gives us endurance, who gives us uh, faith. And God, I ask that you do that this week. Lord, I also now pray a blessing over my friends. Father, would you go before us, leading us every step? Would you come behind us, protecting us? Would you walk beside us? Let us know that you are with us every single day. Jesus, may you turn your face and shine upon us. Would you be gracious and bring peace to our lives? Lord, I also ask that you bless our minds and our mouths. May everything that we think and everything that we say be filtered by our relationship with you. In other words, would we say and think things reflecting of our relationship with you? May we honor you with the things that we say. Lord, everywhere that our feet go, everything that we put our hands to, may it be blessed by you. May we bring you honor this week in all we say and do. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Love you, church. Have a great week.